Good morning, students. Today we will learn a very important topic. It is important because we are going to focus on the planet which we live, which is our home, where we were born, and where we grew up. Yes, our planet Earth, which is a very unique planet. It is believed by most of the scientists that the universe came into existence as a result of the Big Bang, which occurred about 15 billion years ago. The solar system or the sun's family includes eight planets of which the earth is a part. The earth is the third planet in terms of distance from the sun. It is located 149.6 million kilometers away from the sun and it lies between the orbit of Venus and Mars. The Earth is a unique planet because it supports life and it is mainly because of the presence of the atmosphere, hydrosphere and the lithosphere. It is the combination and interaction of these three realms that makes life possible on Earth. The narrow zone where the three realms meet is known as the biosphere. Now the word geography has come from the Greek word geographia. In your book it's written, it comes from two words, geo that is earth and grapho that is to write. So geography is to describe the earth. Geographers look at the use of space on earth and interactions that take place between the people and the land they live on. Geography is the study of both physical and human features of the earth. Since very ancient times, there has been continuous debate relating to the shape of the earth. Since olden days, people have always observed and studied the sky and heavenly bodies. They were aware of the close relationship between the heavenly bodies, the sun and the earth. The earlier scholars and scientists produced their ideas about spherical shape of the earth based on very simple observations. We are going to study about all these simple observations in detail. Now let's talk about the sunrise and sunset. Had the earth been flat, there would not have been sunrise or sunset. So the time of sunrise and sunset is not the same everywhere. It is different at different parts of the earth. Places which are in the east, since the earth is moving from west to east, it rotates from west to east. So we find that places which are in the east see the sun earlier than those which are in the west. Because of its spherical nature, it does not experience days and nights at the same time. Half of it experiences day and the other half is in darkness. Now let's see what is the horizon. The horizon is an imaginary line where the sky and the earth appears to be meeting. Now this circular horizon widens with the increase in height. That is, when we go high up, we find that there is widening of this horizon. That is, when we go high up, we can see a larger part of the spherical nature of the earth. Now, this proves that the 
earth is spherical in shape. Many years ago, that is in 1519, a very adventurous person, Ferdinand Magellan, navigated the entire earth and reached the place from where he started. He started from Spain in 1519 went across South America, then to the Pacific Ocean. In 1521, he was here near the Philippines, moved across the Indian Ocean, across the southernmost tip of Africa and returned to Spain. Now, when he went around the earth, he did not encounter any sharp edges, which was earlier believed that if people go towards the end of the earth, they will fall off. But he returned from the place where he started, that is in Spain. So this also proves that the earth is spherical in shape. Now, if we are standing at a seaport and we see a ship approaching, we cannot see the entire ship at one go. We first see the mast of the ship, that is the highest part. This is the mast. And later on, we are able to see the ship's entire features. Now, why is this possible? This is possible because the earth is spherical in shape. Had the earth been flat, then from the port, we could have seen the entire ship. Even in the 18th, that is later part of the 18th century and early part of the 19th century, there was still a misconception about the earth being flat. So, a person named Alfred Russell Wallace conducted an experiment which proved that the earth is spherical in shape. Now this experiment was conducted in a canal in England which was known as the Bedford Canal. He fixed poles at a distance of 5 kilometers keeping them in the same height above the water level. By observing these three poles with the help of the telescope, he found that the middle pole was taller than the other two poles. This also confirmed that the earth is spherical in shape and not flat as it was believed. You all must have heard about a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse occurs when the earth comes between the sun and the moon and the shadow of the earth falls on the moon. Here we can see how the shadow of the earth is gradually covering the moon. Now if you look at it closely you will find that the shadow is spherical. You can see the curved nature of the shadow. And this proves that the earth is spherical. Because only a spherical or a circular body can cast a circular shadow. This could not have been possible 
if the earth would have been flat. All heavenly bodies such as the sun, the moon, the planets are all spherical in shape and it is mainly because of the rotation. So the earth being a member of the large heavenly bodies cannot be an exception. So the earth is a heavenly body and it is spherical in shape. Today's astronomers and scientists with the help of new scientific instruments like satellites, space probes have clicked clear pictures of the earth from space which proves our planet to be spherical in shape. So this is the most evident proof that the earth is spherical and not flat or any other shape as it was used to be declared in ancient times. As far as the pole star is con considered, it is a star which can be seen from the earth and it is one of the brightest star. Now the pole star is exactly vertical at 90 degrees in the sky from the north pole. And it is in line with the axis. You all are aware about the axis of the earth. And it is the tilt. And this pole star is in line with the tilt of the earth. The angle of the pole star varies with latitude in the northern hemisphere. For example, London which is at 40 degree angle, will make an angle of 40 degree from the pole star. While the equator, which is at 0 degree, will make an angle of 0 degree from the pole star. Had the earth been flat, the pole star would have made 90 degrees from all latitudes. Apart from all these, we must understand that when a rainbow is made, it always takes a circular shape. That also ensures that the earth is spherical. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.